This is the Art Beauty Podcast, where we are always reaching for truth and beauty. Remember, the brands and the people on the show are not paying to be here, so we get to ask them the questions we know you want answered, because you deserve to be informed so you can make the best choices for yourself. With that said, I'm Amber Milt, and today my fabulous co-host is Dr. Jennifer Sai. She is a board-certified optometrist practicing in Manhattan at Line of Sight. We are so honored to have you here on the show today. Welcome. Yes, thank you for having me, Amber. So, you know, I know that right now everybody's focused on new year, new you. And I think one of the things that we're all kind of talking about these days is eyes. I know for me, the holidays were so stressful, right? So, you know, talking about things of what we can do for things like dark circles and dry baggage and yes, those pesky fine lines and wrinkles. Um, and, and I know that we're going to be talking about products that you love a little bit later in the show, but let's just get right into it. You know, I think so many people are looking for that magic cure for dark circles. Mm -hmm. What do you recommend to patients that they do? What causes them? Yeah. Uh, what causes them is actually key to know what you're looking for in ingredients. Because if you are actually treating something, let's say on top of the skin, that's causing the darkness um, with ingredient that's helping with underneath the skin, it's not going to resolve the issue for you. So um, I show um, followers, but also patients, a pinch test. So really it's simple. You just pinch the skin underneath the eye um, and you want to make sure you have enough light on you. So there's no shadows. Shadows oftentimes um, cause um, a, a dark uh, darkness to it. So if you pinch the skin and the darkness moves, um, that means the pigmentation is on top of the skin. So let's just hide pigmentation or darkness of the, um, the epithelium on top. So when it's related to that, you want ingredients that actually lighten the skin superficially on top. So vitamin C, um, ingredients like niacinamide, um, is going to be very helpful for top of the skin. Um, and we're thinking on top of the skin, uh, when it is beyond ingredients in creams and eye creams, there are many treatments that can be done in office that really target that area. Um, IPL, intense pulse light is a treatment that is very, very effective in targeting the darkness on top of the skin and pigmentation. Um, but it's also very effective at treating dry eyes as well, um, simultaneously while you're doing it together. That's pretty neat. Wait, so IPL, which I mean, I'm super familiar with. We've talked on this podcast a lot. I love it. It's great. I've only had it done sort of all over the face areas where, you know, for, for me, I tend to get dark darkness around um, sort of you know, the upper cheek area from exactly. sun damage. But when you're talking about dry eye, are you are you treating the eyelids? Are you like, where are you treating with IPL to target dry eyes? Yeah, so um, we were one of the first offices to get the new technology. It is a device meant uh, for around the eye region. So you are okay. wearing protection and shield and the device can also treat around the skin. Um, so it is a similar to the IPL that you have, but the frequency and the settings are different. We can treat the top lid and right underneath the bottom lid. We can switch to a larger one to then target the full face. Um, so it, it's quite helpful. And that is where your meibomian glands are sitting, which oftentimes when they get clogged, um, you're not making enough oil for your tears. So that causes dryness. So, oh my goodness. I'm signing up for this immediately. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be calling your office to book this appointment. Right. So that's um, on top of the skin. We didn't talk about underneath the skin though. Either. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about it. And, and by the way, just, just yeah. as a little aside right now, now is a great time to be doing IPL. These winter months are a great time to be targeting exactly. things, skin discoloration all over your skin with um, laser treatments, because you're not going to be, you know, for the most part, for those of us who are not in sunny Florida or maybe sunny California, you're not getting as much outdoor skin exposure. So now is actually a great time if you have that hyperpigmentation on top of the skin to be looking at those treatments. So let's talk about if it's underneath the skin. Right. So remember we were talking about like the pinch test, right? So if you're pinching it and you move the skin and the pigmentation still stays in the same spot, that is underneath. And that is typically due to poor blood circulation or blood pooling. Um, so usually with that, you want something that constricts with the blood vessels um, instead of dilating it. So caffeine is great, arnica, peptides, even um, a cold compress, icing it. So that's what's effective for underneath the skin when it comes to dark circles. Now, I want to ask you, because I've heard mixed things from different doctors. There are some doctors who say, you know, there's really nothing, no cream that you can use to target discoloration. But, but do you agree with that? 
it, I would say it is call it half and half. It's always half of it is genetics um, and changes over time. Part of it is we start to lose a little bit of elasticity there, a little bit of orbital fat volume. And um, that causes a little bit of that sunkenness or hollowness, which can look like dark circles. But the other thing is there are things related to even like um, thinner skin, but also, um, you know, things like not getting enough sleep, um, yeah. not getting enough sleep again, uh, causes issues there uh, as well as like smoking. So there are certainly things within diet and exercise and lifestyle that can contribute to that, um, that can be resolved. Um, and also certainly certain types of treatments. We did talk about IPL, but um, there is even something now that we also have that you may have heard of, um, radio frequency that's yeah. often used for um, building collagen. Uh, it's used for face and body. We have one that's used around the eyes. What that's um, great at is really building collagen underneath the um, underneath the tissue subdermally, but also it helps with, um, again, melting those oil glands to help with dry eyes. And it helps with tightening the skin and helps with fine lines and wrinkles too. So um, I would say if you're really targeting it full on, you probably want to consider good sleeping habits, diet, lifestyle, but also there are certain eye creams, just knowing what you're exactly looking for. Right. Um, and if you're looking for something more effective, um, certainly there are treatments for that. You know, I, and I think you bring up a good point. I, so I, um, you know, I've been in the beauty business for 20 years and I find that when I'm consistently using an eye cream, my eyes do look better. I do think with any sort of treatment, we, we need to manage expectations. So, you know, you're never going to get in a bottle what you're going to get from a needle, what you're going to get from a knife. Right. I mean, that's exactly. just, but I, but I do want to just ask, you know, your opinion, because there's some doctors who are like, oh, you can't use any cream for under eye, uh, discoloration. And, I don't know. For, for me, I it seems like what you're saying is, well, let's target the type of discoloration you have. Is it above the skin or is it below the skin? And then there are things that you can use to certainly help, right? These ingredients that you mentioned, niacinamide, caffeine, depending on the type of eye problem. But, but I think it's good to manage expectations that it's not going to be a miracle cream um, right. to totally get rid of it, but that it certainly can help. Exactly. There's no dark circle eraser um, right. that you just use overnight and it's gone. Uh, so it's what are we targeting and what ingredient is in it? Um, and think of it more like maintenance um, in terms of, you know, when you choose ingredients and you use them top, it, can you use, you know, the argument is, can you just use fa facial creams that have the same ingredients on top of the lid? Most of the time, if it's just generic, you know, um, making sure that you use vitamin C all over, that's great. But you just have to be careful because let's say if you use something more occlusive around the lid region, it can cause things like milia. So it really, the concentration also matters because the area, again, is slightly different around the eyelid region. Um, but again, it's more about the ingredients and what the specific concern is. I'm so glad you said that because here you are, you are a doctor, you are not pushing any particular products, but people are always like, do I really need a separate cream? And I'm like, well, the eye area is different. So yeah, if you have the budget, if it's within your beauty budget and it's something you can incorporate it into your routine, certainly have a product formulated for the eyes is mm -hmm. is not a bad choice. Exactly. Um, you know, and then you mentioned genetics. I mean, I mm -hmm. think that there are certain people, my husband is one of them who has genetically dark circles under his eyes. He had them, his mother had them. I didn't know the grandparents. So I'm not sure if they had them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what are your thoughts as an optometrist with things like filler under the eye? Filler. Okay. So um, fillers are, uh, is going to help with hollowness Yeah. Um, or let's say um, you've lost volume there, which again, probably is more considered a, a redistribution of your orbital fat pads. Um, that tends to happen with age. It can be genetic. Some people are born with just um, under eye bags, a little bit of puffiness. So fillers, when it comes to hollowness, could be helpful. Again, that's, you know, are you looking for something that's over the counter to something like needles to surgical procedures? But, um, you know, if let's say there is a loss of... Um, so that when the skin thins, as we get older, the fat pads protrude out and that causes the appearance of under eye bags. If you inject filler, the area isn't necessarily considered even because the fat, your natural fat and, and filler fat, especially over um, a very, very, very thin tissue, their very, very thin skin, it's going to be more apparent. Right. Um, so I would say it 
definitely is something where you'd want to go to someone that you trust, a skilled practitioner. Um, and you want to make sure, especially if you're injecting anywhere around the eye area. Yeah. Um, but the other thing is, again, there are so many amazing things that can be done now these days. If you're looking for more of a, the next step approach be, um, beyond um, creams, like I said, radio frequency is something that would um, be something considered helpful. There's even things like exosomes now, exosome facials and treatments around that area, microneedling um, that others might turn to for more uh, sort of regenerative or restorative approach. Yeah. And you, and you hit the nail on the head. Be very careful around the area with the eyes. Make sure that you're going to somebody who um, is licensed and board certified to do that. I would not go to your, um, well, I'm just going to look at that. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> be, be, just be careful around the right. eyes. Um, and, and then we've also, and we don't have to get into this, but be careful because certain fillers can almost um, add more discoloration if they're put, if they're placed improperly because hyaluronic acid has a blue tint. So it can actually make that discoloration appear worse. Mm -hmm. Proceed with caution. Um, okay, so so we kind of covered, uh, and I love that idea of the pinch test for um, under eye bag uh, for discoloration rather. Right. Let's talk about now under eye bags because yeah. that's the next thing, and we've kind of hit on that a little bit. Um, what are what are some of the things that we should be looking for for that? Uh, well, if if the under eye um, bag is again genetically related, that means um, since you were a kid, you've had the you know the signs of it. It's just the genetic distribution of your orbital fat pads. Um, things that help burn enough fat. If we're talking about treatment wise, it's definitely like something with microneedling because mm -hmm. it can target underneath the skin to burn a little bit of the orbital fat. Obviously, there's blepharoplasty if you really want to take the surgical route. Um, but you know, starting first base with just creams, um, yeah. certain in specific, again, ingredients for under eye bags. If it's caused by fluid retention, um, then caffeine is very effective. Again, icing it. Um, Arnica is great at that. Um, but if it's more fat, um, you know, where that's located, then that's slightly different. Gotcha. Okay. And now something that I feel like we all have to contend with from all the smiles and the laughter, um, <laughs> Fine lines and wrinkles around the area, mm -hmm. eye area. Mm -hmm. uh, fine lines, and again, we're starting with like the um, creams. We're starting there first um, as baseline uh, retinol. Uh, retinol based eye creams are very, very great because it helps with cellular turnover in that area. And that's great for fine lines and wrinkles. Um, again, if it's dehydrated skin that's causing fine lines and wrinkles, anything that has hyaluronic acid is quite important to help with um, plumping the skin and keeping it uh, moisturized. Uh, if you think about it more on a holistic level, you want to be pre preventative too, because we know sun damage, for example, is going to lead to fine lines and wrinkles and deterioration of the tissue there. So um, looking for an SPF that is safe to use around the eyes with mineral blockers is going to be also a great choice. If we are moving on beyond that, certainly careful placements of Botox um, around the eye can be helpful. Uh, yeah, so yeah, those are the suggestions, generally speaking. I am a huge fan of Botox. I didn't start until my um, mid to late 30s, um, but I, I will tell you when they do this around the eyes, it does make a difference. I mean, you know, small amounts can make a very, very big difference. But again, go to somebody who is board certified, who you trust, because the problem with Botox is if it gets misplaced, you there's nothing we can do about it. It's not like fillers. We can't dissolve it. You have to exactly. just wait it out. And um, I've seen some videos. It's just not fun. No. Um, <laughs> so, you know, with that said too, I feel like we've been talking about the creams. I, I, I'm excited because I do want to talk about Lumify. Um, I know that you um, are, are you, you don't work for Lumify or, you know, you're not a, but you do love this. I love Lumify. So I started with the Lumify. You have the drops there. I see it. <laughs> I wear them every time. Now, I, 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 I'm, this is a good time to talk about this. So these make a huge difference on me. I'm, I've posted it on social. I will repost on social around time because you'll see um, what a, and anytime I go on camera, this is what I'm wearing. Um, is it dangerous to be using these every day? So, yeah. Okay. So everything in moderation, right? Yeah. Um, and a lot of my patients who are, uh, let's say, um, because they're on screen, they're filming, they need something where their eyes look white. Uh, yeah. And I, I get it. It's something that's instant. Um, I'm always going to start first with, it's always important to sort of target what's causing the redness underneath it. 
So whether that's dryness, it's, it's uh, working on that. But when it comes to more of the whitening effect, Lumify is very safe and it's very effective. Um, the key difference is the active ingredient in it is bromonidine um, tartrate, which is very different from, let's say, eye whitening drops over the counter made from lysine or yeah. eyes. So you want to stray away from those because the ingredients are slightly different. So um, this doesn't constrict both your um, your vessels and your arterials. So it's going to be a much more safer option. Um, but when I say in moderation, it's more that there are definitely um, preservatives or certain, all bottles do. Yeah. And sometimes when you use that too often or frequently, that can cause a little bit of dryness. Not so um, I would say very safe, um, you know, um, eye whitening drop to use, but again, also in moderation. I mean, for me, it's like my podcast days, are, my recording days are on Friday. So I'm using this once a week. And then maybe if I've got like an event to go to or something, but it's not exactly. necessarily a daily thing. But boy, let me tell you, they make a huge difference if you have an event, if you're going to be on camera, if you need to look just your best. <laughs> yeah, it brightens and it feels like it's like um, sort of uh, perks up your eyes a bit. It totally perks up your I mean, I, I it, this is in, I have a bottle of this in every single one of my on-camera makeup bag <laughs> or kits. Um, so I was really excited because they, um, I, I've known about Lumify for a while. I worked mm -hmm. with them at New Beauty. Um, and then they came out with an entire sort of eye care line. So, um, you know, as a doctor, let's start with the the micellar cleansing water because I, I mean, I, I know that you've posted online about this. Mm -hmm. For me, so many makeup, waterproof makeup removers burn my eyes. When I tried this, zero burning, took off the makeup. Um, what is it about this that's so special? So this is, well, first, it's great because it's a three-in-one. You can use it around the eyes. You can, I even use it around my face as well. Yeah. Um, it's very effective at removing waterproof makeup. Um, so when they made the ingredients, they made sure, uh, you know, because Lumify is, uh, they start, you know, made by, um, I would say by Bash and Mom and it's, you know, started in eye care. We know that the ingredients are, um, very safe and effective, but also clean and hypoallergenic. So sometimes the burning can come from ingredients that could be a little bit harsh, um, around mm -hmm. the eye region. Um, so usually with this, it's great because it helps to remove, but it's also moisturizing at the same time. So it doesn't strip away too, too much from the skin um, and cause it to, let's say, become more dry afterwards. And um, I think all the all the eye illumination design, it's um, packed with like hyaluronic acid, vitamin C um, and botanical extracts. They really try to mimic the natural biology of our tears and our eyes. And that's, um, I, I find great because not only in just the drops, but also in, in the products that they make, it's very gentle. I, you know, and I, again, I have to tell you, I, I have not, I mean, 99% of a uh, waterproof eye makeup removers really burn my eyes. The only other one I've been able to use is Sephora's, but this one, which I think no sometimes if it gets in the yeah. eyes, it hurts, but this not at all. And it does everything off. It was so great. Amazing. Um, and then, of course, no, you know, I don't want to shout out, but I'm I wear the Lashify fake okay. lashes again. Only when I'm going on camera, I don't sleep with them overnight. Um, I take them off every day, but I think that they pop up. But I I, I love a lash extension. Yeah. Um, I'm a lash extension lady. Mm -hmm. So I I was very interested that they came out with a lash and brow serum. Um, so now, does this have some of those growth ingredients that we find in other lash and brow serums? Uh, so we're talking about prostaglandins? Yeah, prostaglandins. No, it does not. Okay. Um, and that's what's great about it. It does not contain it. Um, they've def definitely done studies where they show the full results around uh, week 12. But you can even see it just looks like a transparent, uh, nice serum on top. So I don't know if you've seen the latest talks about um, you know, prostaglandins are used. It started in uh, glaucoma eye drops to help mm -hmm. with decreasing eye pressure. One of the side effects is uh, lash lengthening and and, and or hyperpigmentation of uh, lashes. Um, so that's how you know products like Cortez came about. Now, it again, it's not. It's more on a milder, I would say, effect. But sometimes prostaglandin used in the wrong area, a little too much. For some people, 
can cause, we worry about like orbital fat loss, um, you know, melting a little bit of the under eye fat. So again, this isn't saying avoid all prostaglandin lash serums, um, that there are cases. I'm a Lashify user. I, I'm sorry, not Lashify. I'm a Latisse user. I use Latisse. So there I admit it, but you want to be careful and make sure not get it in the eye. You, um, you don't want to get in the eye. You don't want to get it around the skin. So right by the base. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, and, you know, I went to an eye doctor and I asked, Hey, <laughs> because my, my vision now in my mid forties is changing. Uh, <laughs> and I went and I was like, I'm worried because I'm using this. I know that this was developed for glaucoma. Is it changing the pressure in my eye? So listen, I'm just going to say, if you're using any products in the eye and starting to no notice eye changes, it wasn't, he said it had nothing to do with that. Go visit your eye doctor. Exactly. You know, it's always good. And also he was like, 40 is the year when people, you know, start to see that drop off in vision. Uh, we hate that number. <laughs> don't look um, it, but no, I, we, it's one of those things. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things. Um, okay. So, and then, so the brightening eye cream, and this yeah. is why I was really glad that we got to talk before, you know, we, we like to keep it real here on this podcast about like, oh, is there any magic sort of thing? But you did mention um, the different types of hyperpigmentation, both on top of the skin and below the skin, what is this brightening eye cream good for? So um, the one that you're holding, the brightening eye cream, it does contain, um, you can see it's nice. It's not too thick, again, um, especially around the skin, around the eyes. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure it's gentle. But hyaluronic acid has vitamin C and I bright, um, botanical extracts. So what that's great for is, again, it kind of covers a little bit of everything because hyaluronic acid is great for um, moisturizing the skin. Let's say if it's dry or dehydrated. Um, so we want to always moisturize to prevent like fine lines as well. But also it contains the vitamin C, which is hyperpigmentated, uh, hyperpigmentation on top of the skin. Um, let's call it from sun damage or just over time, um, you know, it can certainly change. Uh, so that's going to be helpful for that. Um, so I would say it covers a little bit of everything. Again, um, peptides is helpful for uh, a little bit of puffiness. Um, it kind of has a little bit of everything, but I would say that glow is more just like nice for the skin on top. And now <clears throat> I would be, um, do you know, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot here because it, it was bad of me not to look this up. Do you know what the price points on these are ballpark? Um, good question. I think, um, it's somewhere between 20 to 20, 20 to 28, uh, depending on which product you're looking at. So, um, very affordable sold. I I'm yeah. going to assume, is it sort of sold in, in mass market areas, probably online as well? Yeah. You can find it at your local retailer, um, drugstore. You can find it on, online, um, definitely places like Target, Walmart, CVS, um, certainly carry the product line. Now, um, are there other, you know, while I have you here, before I let you go, are there other brands for people out there who might be listening of products that you love, you know, when it comes to eye care? Like vision? You mean in eye drops? It, no, no, no. For like the, the well, well, actually, let's start there. So for eye drops, um, are there products that you like for dry eyes? For dry eyes, um, whether you wear contacts or not, it's important to look for bottles that are preservative free. Mm -hmm. um, what I like is BioTrue Hydration Boost. Um, uh, so BioTrue Hydration Boost comes in a bottle, but it is preservative free. So it's very easy to use instead of the simple vials that you have to carry around and reattach, but it feels very comfortable um, on, on the eye when you use it and it doesn't blur the vision. So that's one of my favorite ones for um, dry eyes. Um, I really like one called Sustain Nighttime Ointment for more severe dryness and it's used only um, at bedtime to help with dryness before um before that. So, and that one's more of like a gel formula, correct? A little bit thicker. Yes. Okay. Um, and, and how often are, now do you use, this is, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Do you use eye drops every day? I personally don't use eye drops every day. Okay. Um, I do, we focus on, I, I think drops are great to have, um, as needed, but it's more about, again, treating the underlying issue. If there's underlying dryness, oftentimes we are more concerned about, um, oil gland loss. 
Okay. Um, or uh, build up on the lid margin, even like mites that lead to blepharitis or Ugh. rosacea related dryness. So we'd rather treat that, the root cause, by targeting that in the office using, again, radio frequency or IPL treatments or uh, thermal expressions. Um, and also talk, talking about lifestyles and lid hygiene and how to keep that area clean so that it's preventative. And there's so many habits that we do each day, not just in New York. We look, we all look at screens. We all wear, you know, contacts, we fly. All these factors cause dryness as well. Um, I have to shout out, by the way, if you haven't checked out Dr. Sai's um, Instagram, she's got fabulous videos on there. It's doc, what it's Dr. Jen and Juice, which is so cute because- Dr. I mean, Jen and Juice, that's right. <laughs> Dr. Jen and Juice, um, but with the Dr, not the full spelled out doctor. Um, you know, and, and I, listen, I asked before we got on, you have the most incredible skin. So since we are a, a beauty podcast, can you share some of the favorite products that you're using right now? Yeah. So if I were to go to my through my skincare um, regimen, I remove my makeup with the micellar cleansing water um, from La Lumify Illuminations, um, and I double cleanse. So oil, um, and then another foam base um, that has a tea tree oil, which is very helpful for anti-inflammatory. Um, and then I make sure that I use a toner to uh, remove anything to help with the pores. And then on top of that, I Wait, apply- what toner are you using? I always, I know you're going to ask, I'm going to butcher the name. It's the French <laughs> brand, La Prochet. No. Bi bi Biologie, Christian. Biologie, yeah. Exactly. Okay, yes, we've had them on here before. So you're using the P50? Yep, exactly. Well, they have such a cult following. It is, um, yeah, people, that makes sense because people who love it, love it. Love it. That's the only, and, and, you know, I don't go to specifically maybe just one brand for all the things right. I need, but I think certainly certain brands have really great products um, depending on what you're looking for. So you um, use the P50 mm -hmm. as the toner. Okay. Gotcha. Yep. Um, and then I put on uh, the eye cream first. I do use the hydrogel brightening eye cream um, by eye illuminations underneath my eye. I pat it on top just around the area for face. I'm my like go to I've used it for years is belief. Okay. I, um, cream. I don't know if you've heard of that one. Yeah. I just, I like it. The moisturizing bond, it's, it's not too thick. It's not too light, but it, you know, feels great. And it's, um, softens up the skin. So I've been using that for a very long time, but, you know, performing maintenance treatments, you know, when I'm doing my dry treatments with IPL radio frequency, and we also do microneedling in our office and exosomes, um, we do that for phase two. And it's kind of nice because it's again, more preventative, right. um, approach and, you know, Everyone does something, so you got to maintain. <laughs> you got to maintain, but boy, oh my goodness, you have the most incredible, gorgeous skin. Um, I just want to thank you so much for being on here. If people want to come and find you, so first of all, if they, if they want Lumify, we've already said you can find this. Um, wh where can they go? So for the Lumify products, you can search online. Again, your major retailers, Walmart, Target, you'll find them at Dwayne Reed, um, CVS, um, so uh, major locations. And if you are um, searching online, um, again, you can find them through the major retailers uh, from their websites online. I believe you can even find it on Amazon as well. Yes. Um, and uh, yeah. And then if people want to come in, to, if they're in the New York area and they want to come see you, uh, what's the best way to find you? So line of sight is in Hudson Yards in Manhattan. So we are on 29th and 10th Ave. Um, so you certainly can just reach out. Our um, website is uh, lineofsightvision.com and our Instagram is lineofsightvision. Amazing. I want to thank you so much for being on with me today, Dr. Sai. Before I let you go, do you have any New Year's resolutions? New Year's resolutions? Uh, good question. Um, a lot of inner work um, okay. and always reflecting in um, self-awareness. And when it comes to, I think, um, you know, skincare and beauty goals, Really, it's, um, I'm excited to see what's in store, what the trends are, and to see what we can bring into our practice um, that we can offer that, you know, I think stem cell therapy is a huge thing now, mm -hmm. and um, looking to see how we can incorporate that in 2024 into our practice more Amazing. than we are now, yeah. 
Well, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for being on. If you have questions at home that you want me to pass along to the Lumify team or to Dr. Sai, I'm happy to do so. You can email me at hello at artbeautypodcast.com. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Art Beauty Podcast. And as always, we will see you next Tuesday, hopefully with your eyes looking a little brighter and better. Bye. Bye. (laughs) 